Hi, I'm Nancy Tilbury. I'm Creative Director of Studio XO, fashion technology company based in London. XO is a fashion technology company, so it's slightly different to everything that's going on in wearable tech. You know, we're really focused on the emotion of technology and the integration into fashion and clothing. I have a master's in women's wear. I graduated in the late 90s. It was while I was there I became really curious about what was happening in the sort of convergence of technology on the human body. UPS was sponsoring uh, big projects at, at the Media Laboratory and MIT. Uh, a group emerged that was headed up by somebody called Sandy Pentland, who's a prolific person in this space. and. Um, they were putting multiple computing on the body and I figured there's a role for the fashion designer if we're about to wear tech, whatever kind of tech, we really need to think about it as fabrication and fashion and I just started this, this uh, really interesting, curious journey in, into the world of fashion technology in the late 90s that then led me to Philips Electronics. So, so upon graduating, um, they saw my final collection and I was invited to help them start what was known then as their, their wearable tech team that then became Intelligent Fibres. And for over 10 years, I worked for Philips, developing IP in the area, intellectual property um, for them in wearable tech. Uh, we worked with people like Nike and Levi's, did collaborative projects commercially and in research. So it was a really, really interesting journey, foundation for you know, pre-setting up my own studio uh, with my partner, Benjamin, Studio XO. I knew from a really young age that I wanted to be in fashion. I think the first person that inspired me was Zandra Rhodes. You know, she was kaleidoscopic, I saw her on television, sat there, became obsessed, really wanted to learn about all her textile techniques that, that to me, felt incredibly vi vibrant, and I wanted to be a vibrant person when I grew up. And, 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 and she was a peacock, and she attracted me to that space. And, um, and that's kind of how the journey began. Uh, once I got there, I realised that fashion was a very traditional industry, and I had to learn to cut my stripes. So um, at my first degree, I, I really you know, had some very, very grounded training, like good pattern cutting, good making skills. And in my final year, I started to think, surely our clothes can do more. So I, I put together a collection that was all based on three-dimensionality. So I printed all the surface of my clothes in 3D and everybody in the audience had to interact with them by wearing a pair of 3D glasses. So I suppose in some ways that's where it began, based on that question, surely our clothes can do more. I think I incrementally built up, you know, I, create, I created a understanding with my tutors. You know, it, it very much was always about being able to demonstrate your ideas or die. You know, we all know fashion is an incredibly tough environment and they were very tough with me. So intellectually, I had to have a very, very strong stand-up argument. So I always, always became a very thorough researcher. So I sought out what people were doing in the research labs to find scientists who were specialists in the area to ensure that, that when I presented my work, it was authentic. I can recall a time with a very, very, very accomplished fashion designer who runs one of the biggest houses, who literally shuffled me out of the room and um, I stood and uh, stood my ground and said, you are wrong, the digitization of clothing will happen, technology will integrate, one day we will wear the, the surface of the computer on our bodies. He told me I was literally a mad thing and I needed to leave the room. I continued to argue with him until my professor told me time out and, and I, if I got to meet him again I would have the same argument with him I'm sure. Although I think the fashion industry is becoming themselves more curious about what's next so that might be a slightly different conversation. Well, I think because digital's on the agenda and this, what's happening with the Internet of Things and all the discussion about the digitisation of actual fashion products um, in the houses, people are starting to wonder what wearable technology will mean. And with a brand like ours, I think we're authentically developing product in that area. So we're tangible, we're readable now. You know, my ideas have become... Um, much more understandable. So I think the dialogue would be, how do we get into this, rather than, that's a definite no.
Well, I think in the way that we do things now is, well, let, let's take, you know, purchasing clothes on the British High Street, and not to name any names, but there are some huge big stores that we can walk in and consume, you know, a T-shirt for under 50p. So we, you know, once we study, you know, sustainability models in fashion, none of this has longevity. You know, I can't, I really can't understand why some policies haven't been passed already about these types of products. You know, there's a, a classic fable about a girl that comes out of a certain high street store and the bag breaks and she drops four t-shirts and she doesn't even bother to turn around and pick them up because she knows they're, they're wet, they're muddy, what's the point? I'll go back and, and buy them again. And I think, you know, people, you know, that, that disdain towards clothing is, is, is alarming on, on so many levels. Um, in the southeast, we've gone from 17, in the UK, in the southeast, we've gone from 17% to 35% textile waste. And that's because the way in which we're consuming product. Now, I believe with new technologies, even though you know we will have to use you know elements of silicon that are tough to recycle, I think um, fashion future is a little bit more like fashion past. So we will invest in garments that are maybe higher price point. We'll look at uh, other types of models. So maybe subscribing to our clothes, which is really interesting. You know, the idea that we may pay a subscription fee to have vessels that we can consume content and, and ultimately I believe that Generation Digital want to consume like that. You know, actually the reason why they're going into these big shops is because of the speed at which they want to switch up their fashion. Now if the surface of their clothes was transformable, would they really need to do that? if they had vessels that were able to transform. So I suppose we really believe in Tumblr for the body. And I think that this is a really interesting time as kind of remix culture emerges, what you know, what will that mean to fashion? And we have to shape shift because we can't sustain what's happening in, in the high street at the moment. And, and that's very much, you know, our view and, and one of the driving factors behind Studio XO.